Hi, this is your host, Sapin Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And we are here at Open Source Summit in Dublin, and we have with us once again, Shohan, Chief of Technical Steering Committee of the ELISA project. Uh, Shohan, first of all, it's great to see you in person after a very long time. Yes. Yes, it is good to see you. Last time we did this remote. It's been uh, uh, very, very long. So first of all, tell us, you know, Coming, I mean, you have been to a lot of events before this uh, only, but you know, if you look at this event, you know, what have you, you seen so far from, of course, you know, Elisa Project's perspective? Um, this is uh, the first time in almost two and a half years we came together in some ways. We just, uh, all the mem uh, I'm, I have seen some people that I have been interacting remotely for the last two years or so for, for the first time face to face. That's been exciting. And we also are doing a BAF today at the end of the day at six o'clock, um, talking about open source and safety critical and safety um, supporting safety critical applications using open source software. Mm -hmm. And we also had a session on Monday, I think Monday, Tuesday, talking about ELISA specifically and answering questions. And then we are going right from here to Manchester for a workshop to talk about um, to talk about what we have done this past quarter and then set goals for the next quarter. Talk a bit about uh, what does it mean because when we use the term safety, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes it gets bundled with security and other things also. So talk about, you know, what is the specific scope and limitation that you have put on this project? What does it mean? So um, safety is different from security, right? Um, in sometimes safety require a security requirement and safety re requirement could be the same, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes they are at odds with each other. Um, an example I can talk about is, say you have, uh, um, you can adjust, uh, automatically adjust your seat position in a car, for example. And if you are allowed to do that um, while going 80 miles an hour, um, that's not safe. So you want to disallow that feature. That would be an example of a safety feature. Um, a security feature would be somebody won't get into your car or somebody will not change your seat position accessing your remote credentials for example on your car app. Right. So that would be that would be security breach. So if you if I were to explain in layman, I mean terms that are easily understood um, that's one thing that comes to my mind, I, you know, how you can differentiate the two. So in one case, it's safety because if you were to change your seat positions going 80 miles an hour, if you accidentally could do that using the software, and that would be a serious safety concern. Excellent. And then if somebody else can change it while you are driving, you know, get into your app and be able to change it somehow get your get into get into your um, app and then be able to do that hack into your then that would be a security breach the same thing could, that could happen because of two different reasons but it then it becomes a safety as well as security what is the once again mission or the scope of this project and then we'll also talk about you know what are the industries where you know elisa project is playing a role but let's start with the project itself. Project itself. Mm -hmm. So ELISA is, stands for Enabling Linux in Safety Critical Systems. So what does that really mean? What it means is that um, we are looking to when uh, safety, we have safety standards, various safety standards. We have safety experts that know how, wh what those safety standards are, how to get certification and all of those things, right? On this side, we have kernel developers and kernel experts and um, and people that build um, safety critical applications on top of Linux. That's the product space happening. Right? So ELISA brings these two groups together to collaborate on making it easier for uh, to deploy uh, lin uh, safety critical applications on Linux. That's really what it is. It's a collaboration and cooperation pl uh, uh, platform. Well, platform, I'm using platform in a different sense here, meaning collaboration place, mm -hmm. place of collaboration to, yeah. for these two groups. Right, it's not a code platform, platform it's a platform, platform, I mean, platform it's a bring plat people together. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about uh, uh, safety critical applications, uh, 
what would be because once again as you were giving example of car safety could mean many different things. It could be the physical safety of an individual, 50, safety of a, a structure, or it could be the safety of that system itself. Correct. So uh, which safety are we talking about here? Safety of the system um, in the sense that um, uh, is it safe? You can't separate safety um, of uh, people from um, safety of the system, right? You're riding a bike, wheel comes off. That's a safety issue. So you want to do a checklist and say, make sure that it's built right. So it's a checklist. Um, a lot of the stuff is this. some of the standards, the early standards are checklists. So the, com, uh, the, the challenge here is though, um, Linux is an open source software. It's developed with, it's a different kind of software development process. That means we don't necessarily have design. We don't follow this design um, things. We follow design, but not in the way it's demonstrable. Uh, not in the way ha uh, the safety experts want to see it demonstrable. Meaning, you got the design, you have done the design, and you said, okay, code is done, and based on the design, and then you have tests done, and you can prove and to end saying this is this is particular requirement here is implemented here and then there is a test here that makes sure this and you can prove that so that's what safety experts look for so whereas linux development process we have all of those elements in there but they are not always easily demonstrable so that is the challenge for alisa let's talk about the the project in the sense software and code side of ELISA project. Can you talk a bit about that? What does that side look like? Right. So we do not do code, code at ELISA. It's um, what we are doing is we are defining, um, we are providing resources, tools, and processes for system integrators to use to on their platforms to be able to uh, provide evidences for uh, getting safety certification. So we are providing resources and. The resources could be a process saying how do you how do you go about making um, uh, how do you figure out what your workload is using what uh, what is your what kind of system calls your workload is making on the Linux platform and we provide a process for how to find the footprint so that you can go and say. So these are the system calls we are interested in because those are the system calls our workload uses and then how do we make sure those system calls continue to work the way we want them to work and then are they um, are they doing it are they s safe enough to be used in safety critics excellent when you talk about workloads uh, can you give example of either specific industries you know or use cases where Lisa project is kind of helping them kind of improve their safety, you know, whole strategy and, you know, posture. Right. So we have an automotive telltale use case we are using um, uh, as a generic um, telltale to to look at and then figure out provide all these processes and see if it's safe. And it's a mixed criticality, meaning you will have a, the example of a mixed criticality would be a um, critical part of the uh, one that helps the car to be driven, say, and the second part would be infotainment. It's kind of a mixed criticality application. So we are looking at one of those as telltale use cases. And in the medical space, medical working group, we are looking at OpenAPS, which is uh, it's a platform that uh, um, runs on Raspberry Pi. You have the Raspberry Pi, you have the OpenAPS running on it, and you have the insulin pump. And and a, a phone uh, for controlling. I mean, what it, it's a, you can control, you can figure out, user can use it to inject insulin and manage their um, needs for insulin. And so we are looking at that um, platform and we are looking, doing STPA analysis on that to, to uh, we're evaluating that use case in, within the context of safety within the context of, uh, and, and we are doing that. And then we are, what, well, another thing we are doing is take the open APS and say, what are the Linux subsystems it requires and uses 
we are developing a model. We did a high level analysis of that and we are drilling down into low level and we just published a uh, process on the on Elisa GitHub that looks at um, that looks at traces using tools, S trace and so on, some of the Linux commands that traces generic workloads to figure out what system calls um, that workload is using. And we hope to apply that process, get open APS community to help us do the uh, use the process to trace and tell us. So this gives us, this loop gives us um, confidence that by doing that, that's really exactly what we want, what we hope system integrators will do um, on their platform. So using our process, going and figuring out what, what their needs are, what their requirements are on Linux uh, kernel itself and what subsystems they are using and so on, so they can figure out, not just Linux subsystem, there is a platform on top, user space on top, right? So they can figure out those things and figure out how they can, once they understand what their workload uses, needs of their workload on the operating system, and then they can go about and saying, hey, we can look at this smaller subset of code, Linux code and how to uh, do safety on that. Uh I also want to talk about because uh, I cover some company like building system management and all of other industries which are you know where the people's life are at stake without the failure of a system. So mm -hmm. does that mean the Elisa project can you know or play a role in you know those? I mean, if you look at just building lift, you know, elevators, you know, automotive, wherever a person's life can be at a stake because the failure of the system can lead to a catastrophic disaster, you know, fire could happen. So what is the scope of this project? Because you gave example of automobile and that's a very well understood case. You, but there are other scopes also of the project? So the other one, Boeing, uh, Boeing just joined and we are going to, they are interested in launching the aerospace working group. Mm -hmm. We're hoping that they will bring their use case. So, um, so what we are really doing at Elisa is we are, um, all of the different spaces that safety critical is applications are being built, aerospace, medical, um, and then automotive, they all have challenges. So we are providing a neutral place okay. for them to come and talk about their mm -hmm. challenges mm -hmm. and to learn from each other. And um, so that's what Elisa is doing. So we are opening that, that up. We don't particularly necessarily know, like when I say we, I'm talking about um, the not all members of Elisa know all the details of the space that this Elisa, I mean, safety critical application space, right? They know their space. They know their challenges. But by coming together and talking about it, we are going to be solving these challenges together so that we have, uh, we have a better outcome. Where do you see Elisa project? Where do you see it in your few years? Uh, you know, and if you can also give a kind of, you know, you did touch about two or three working groups there. Uh, what are the areas where you see those working groups will grow? Or what are the areas that you're like, hey, you are expecting, you know, some working group in those areas? So automotive and medical, um, that's what we have right now. And aerospace is coming in. Um, what we're hoping to do is by expanding uh, the problem space, that we will, um, our the processes and resources that we provide, um, processes we develop, will um, address the needs of all the players involved in this space. So that's what I'm, I'm really excited about Boeing joining and then bring, uh, wanting to kick off the aerospace. So that's what we'll be doing. Um, maybe next time we talk about it, maybe we'll have more uh, people coming in. Um, so technology is pretty much part of our life now. Um, we, we can't live without technology. I mean, we all use phones and you know, everything. I mean, phone is an example, but <laughs> but uh, so I'm hoping um, that we will we might have industrial uh, coming in. We have been looking for that use case for a bit, but we have aerospace coming in, so we might have more of those coming in. So 
Sure. Once again, thank you so much for taking time out and uh, sit down with me and talk about the research project and also the scope of the project and, you know, potential new, you know, working groups that may be there. I hope, you know, in addition to aerospace, it will just be space also. <laughs> and then, you know, there are so many industries, you know, which will, which, which have the potential, you know, for this. So uh, thanks for sharing all those insights. And as usual, I'd love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Sukhmeel. It's been good talking to you. <laughs>